Hello everyone. Today let's discuss a bit about the cerebellum. We'll be discussing the cerebellum under three main headings to be placed under three different videos. The first of these videos will have the external features and the lobules. The second, I will hope to discuss the functional subdivisions and the nuclei. And in the last video, we'll be talking about the connections and the applied aspects. Talking about the cerebellum, the first video and the external features and lobules. The cerebellum is also called the little brain in Latin. It is the largest part of the hindbrain and it lies in the posterior cranial fossa. When we talk about its relations, it is superiorly separated from the cerebrum by the tentorium cerebelli, which all of you know is a fold of the dura mater. Anteriorly, it is separated from the pons and the medulla by the fourth ventricle. Just like the forebrain, it has got gray matter on the outside and white matter on the inside. The white matter is also called the medullary core and it has a specific, a special kind of tree-like uh, distribution which is called the arbor vitae. You can see in this picture here which I have highlighted, this is the tree-like pattern of the cerebellum. It is connected to the brainstem by three different peduncles. The superior peduncle is called the brachium conjunctivum and by the brachium conjunctivum, the cerebellum is attached to the midbrain. The middle cerebellar peduncle is called the brachium pontus which attaches the cerebellum to the pons and the inferior cerebellar peduncle is called the restiform body and this attaches the cerebellum to the medulla. Please remember the restiform body is a term which is commonly used in all our textbooks and understand that whenever that term is seen, it is referring to the inferior cerebellar peduncle. Continuing with the external features, the cerebellum basically has two surfaces, a superior and an inferior surface which is separated by a mechanical fissure called the horizontal fissure or sulcus. In the lateral view, this is how the cerebellum looks like and this is the horizontal fissure. You know by this picture, we know that it, lo it looks a lot like the oyster. Basically, it has got a vermis and two lateral hemispheres. The vermis is the part lying near the midline and on the superior surface, it is not particularly distinct from the superior surfaces of the hemisphere. It is just a worm-like process on the superior surface. But on the inferior surface, what we can see is that the vermis lies within a deep groove called the vallicula between the two hemispheres and it is separated from the corresponding hemispheres by a deep sulcus on either side called the paramedium sulcus. Let's see the superior surface once more. There are two specific notches called the cerebellar notches. One is anterior and one is posterior as can be seen from this view. Plus we have also noted by now that the surface is marked by lots and lots of parallel fissures which subdivide the superior surface of the cerebellum, not just the superior, the entire surface of the cerebellum into narrow leaf-like folia which actually aid in increasing the surface area of the cerebellar cortex and actually the cerebellar cortex occupies as much as of 50% of the area of the cerebral cortex. And all these fissures, the deepest of these are three. And these are the primary fissure called the fissure of prima, the horizontal fissure which you have already seen and the posterolateral fissure. And these fissures divide the cerebellum into three main lobules, lobes actually. They are the anterior lobe, the posterior lobe and the floculonodular lobe. Let's see these lobes one by one. The primary fissure is seen on the superior surface and it divides the cerebellum into the anterior and the posterior lobes. From the picture, this is the primary fissure on the side and this is the primary fissure on this side, the left side. And in front of the primary fissure, what we have is the anterior lobe and what we have here is the posterior lobe. But from the side view, what we can see is that the anterior lobe which is lying in front of the fissure of prima is part of the superior surface but the posterior lobe occupies both the superior and the inferior surfaces as evident in this picture also. The green is the anterior lobe, this part is the posterior lobe and here we have the fissure of prima. That will be the horizontal fissure. 
The posterolateral fissure is best seen from the ventral aspect. The cerebellum, as you know, we compared it to an oyster earlier. And this is how the cerebellum is actually folded behind the brainstem. And here in the folded cerebellum, this will be the anterior lobe and this will be the posterior lobe. That small area there is called the floccular nodular lobe. When we open out the cerebellum and label the lobes, this is how the floccular nodular lobe looks like at the bottom. And this area in between is called the posterior lateral fissure. In the lateral view, here is how the floccular nodular lobe looks like. So in short, the cerebellum has got an anterior lobe, which is the green here, a posterior lobe, which is the purple and a floccular nodular lobe. The area between the anterior and the posterior lobes are separated by the fissure of prima. The superior and the inferior surfaces are separated by the horizontal fissure and the posterior lobe as well as the floccular nodular lobe are separated by the posterior lateral fissure here. Now let's see the lobules in brief. To divide the lobules, we first have to just quickly label the parts that we have already seen. That is the fissure prima over here and the horizontal fissure plus the posterior lateral fissure. In front of the fissure prima, what we have is the anterior lobe. Between the fissure prima and the posterior lateral fissure, we have the posterior lobe and the lowermost part is the floccular nodular lobe. There are nine midline lobules and all of these are labeled along the vermis. So let's just highlight the vermis first. Starting with the lobules, from the front we have the lingula followed by the central lobule and the culmen and these are all part of the anterior lobule. The posterior lobule is further divided along the vermis into the deep life, the folium, the tuber, the pyramid and the uvula. We can label them as part of the posterior lobule. And in the floccular nodular lobe, what we have is the nodule over here. Laterally, the cerebral hemispheres are also labeled into nine pairs of lateral lobules along the hemispheres. We can name them. Only the lingula does not have a lateral hemisphere. Along the central lobule, what we have is the ala. Along the culmen, what we have is the quadrangular lobule. With the decli, what we see is the lobule simplex. Along the folium, what we have is the superior semilunar lobule. And with the tuber, we have the inferior semilunar lobule. The biventral lobule is the one seen along with the pyramid. And with the uvula, we have the tonsil. The lobule seen along with the nodule is the flocculus. With this, we come to the external features of the cell. We come to the end of the video and let's see what we can find out in the second video. Thank you.